Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, and life in a northern town. You'll find show notes at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com. You can leave a comment. You can sign up for my patron site. You can purchase a virtual cup of coffee or even sign up for the newsletter. Come back weekly and we'll chat. My name is Vicki and welcome to the podcast. You're never going to guess what I did yesterday. Yeah, I went to the hair salon. And with Max's son, it's a little more difficult to communicate with the beautician. But she is a young lady who graduated with my son. And she does a fantastic job. She did like um, an interim haircut last time, taking it from long to short. But it, it really, I think, wasn't quite as short as she wanted to take it. And I think I limited her by stating that I didn't want it super short in the back. Well, I told her, I just want a haircut. And that's fine. The next thing I knew, I felt my hair being like pulled and cut in the back. Because I can't see without my glasses. And then I realized she was razoring the back of my head. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's awesome. She hasn't done that before. And then I realized it was going really short. And then I got panicked. And then I thought, I wonder how short it's going to be. Maybe it's going to be shorter than last time, I think, because she didn't use scissors on the back. The next thing I knew, she had cut off so much hair and I was like oh that might be a little concerning because my hair does grow fast then she started scissoring it and she turned around and I got my glasses and it is fantastic it's a pixie it's short in the back it can be curled up it can be curled down she did it fancy in kind of a poof on the top and gave it some curl no color haven't done that for years but it was exactly what I wanted. It was exactly what I wanted. I just was shocked that she grabbed a razor blade and we didn't really talk about how short the back was to go, but she knew what the look I was going for. And we just, <sighs> serendipity, it worked out so well. So I will have to say that um, I was a little shocked when the razor blade started going through my hair because I thought, man, is it going to be shaved back there? <laughs> no, um, I've she's used a razor on my hair when it was really long, but this is fantastic. You know what's really fun is I live a block off of Main Street. So I walked across the road down an alley and there's the hair salon. It's right there. I can walk down the road three, four houses down, there's the quilt shop. You know, the ice cream store and the chocolate shop are all downtown. There is a bookstore, but I don't typically walk there or go there because I use the library. Because the thing about the bookstore is you have to order everything, but it's so fun living a block off of Main Street sometimes because you can just take a walk down there and not have to drive. And just working from home, it just kind of, I don't know, it just made me feel like, this is really a cute little place. But in February, I'm going to tell you, it's a real frozen tundra. <laughs> I live on the planet Hoth. But yeah, it, it was a nice cool day and I really enjoyed it. The walking and the fresh air and sunshine and uh, yeah, it was nice. Mask and all. Um, so I walked downtown with mask because there are a lot of tourists in town. Still, I think we're going to have a lot of tourism because there's really nowhere to go There's in the state. You know, they're shut down. I think even parts of Michigan, they aren't getting hair salons open or gyms yet. Some places are. But that seems to be the litmus test. You know, is your gyms open? Is your bars open? Is, you know, the restaurants able to seat? Um, we are in limited capacity on all of those things. 
And so that means a lot of people are traveling up to their summer homes or a lot of people are camping and um, they seem to be getting bored camping and they're swarming the downtown area, which I'm wondering, I wonder what they're buying because a lot of it is just your standard um, tourist stuff. And I guess I've seen it my whole life. So I'm kind of like not interested, but evidently they are because they're carrying around lots of bags, which I think is great for the downtown they're also stopping and lingering and having um, lunch and beverages. So in the summer, I typically don't, even non-pandemic years, would go downtown and have um, any drinks and lunch or dinner because it's just too crowded. But I'm hoping it starts to slack off in the number of people that are down there so we can, when we decide to eat out, it will be, it will be less crowded. So we're taking a big leap into the next level of my husband and I's personal life, um, getting a teeny bit of normality to it. So this weekend are going to be two new levels of things we haven't done since the lockdown in March. Last weekend, our um, son and his wife and their lovely pop Ellie came through and they were going camping and doing the, redoing the trip for their anniversary, which was really, really sweet. They've been married two years, but they stopped by and visited for a while. I haven't had company in this house in months, so it felt good. And we're going to see them again for an overnight stay um, for my mother-in-law's memorial service. Um, I think that's in, yeah, it's in a week or so. And we have friends that are doing um, some social distancing uh, vacationing and they're coming up from Chicago and there is an establishment about 40 minutes from our house that is famous for its food and it's, it's a microbrewery and they invited us to dinner and I was like, oh, I don't know, we haven't done this, it seems to be scary but at the same time I know this establishment is very very firm on everyone wearing masks in the um, waiting area you have to have a reservation to go there you can't it's just not swarmed like you know on a regular summer day you know they would have a, a standing room only area with a band and you know all of that they're not doing that this year but um, I've heard that they're very strict on the rules so we're going to go there and then we're going to go down to visit my mom and dad. And we haven't done that since right before the pandemic. So hopefully, hopefully all of the traveling will ease everybody's anxieties in my household, which is my anxieties in the household. My husband drives every day and delivers um, large semi loads of freight to customers and has. He's an essential worker. I mean, you can't go without your things from truck drivers, right? And he said, Vicki, it's time. We need to get out and see people. We need to see your parents. We need to um, do the things we want to do because, you know, the the numbers have been pretty stable. I think we're, we're about a thousand, less than a thousand people a day. And it seems to be kind of um, pockets, you know, are still of COVID or elsewhere. So overall, bubbling all of, over my words on that because I'm like, yes, yes, it's time. I've gone back to the office for one day, which was for several hours, and I was able to come back home and work. I'm starting to get out in the community. We're starting to expose ourselves a little bit more not all day, every day at work, but dealing with patients. So, you know, it's time. You know, I need to go see my family before it's winter. I need to get out and do some things before um, the flu season comes. Because I'm that's my concern is that the cough, cold, and flu season, once it starts, you know, maybe the COVID testing um, will show it's going to go up. I don't know. We, we don't know. We've never done this before, right? So... That's going to be the excitement for the weekend. I'm super excited to go see these friends who we haven't seen in a while and have uh, dinner. And I don't know what I want to order. I've been there before and they have such fantastic food. And then we're going to go visit my folks. And then after that, we're going to have a small 
um, outdoor socially distanced uh, memorial service for my mother-in-law. And I'm thinking it's going to be a perfect way to wind up and end the summer as we jump into the fall. Yeah, I'm talking fall up here because over the last week, it's been foggy in the morning. It's been cool, like down in the 40s. The sun isn't coming up fully till about eight o'clock or later. And then it slowly warms up. Maybe at noon, it's been getting in the 70s. I think it hit 80 yesterday by three o'clock. But it's definitely, definitely shorter daylight hours. And it's feeling like fall. So I couldn't help myself. I rearranged a couple of things like my tablescape and was going through my uh, artwork and I got fall stuff out. Not all of it, just a few things, just a couple little um, wall hangings and designs. I'm going to go through my quilts. i uh, got a little pumpkin now on the table, but it's green. It's, it's, not, it's not orange yet. So orange pumpkins will wait. I think they'll wait until September. I made a little um, wall hanging. It's not wall hanging. It's a canvas. You can take a, a, I think it's eight by 12 canvas. And remember I went to the dollar store Oops, a couple of weeks ago. I bumped my hand on the computer here. Um, I went to the dollar store a couple of weeks ago and I saw these metal letters. I was watching Do It on a Dime and because when I go to the store, I don't really, I have a hard time seeing individual items. I see like a mass of stuff and then and I do the same thing in the quilt shop. So I do really well watching videos and seeing people talk about what they found. And for a dollar, I got three metal words that were cut out. They looked like they were done on a Cricut, but what's nice is they were metal because I probably could cut out some metal, but I don't want to try that on the Cricut. And it says harvest, thankful, and welcome. So I made a wreath f more for Christmas. I had a pom-pom string of pom-poms. It's like a garland laying around and I wrapped it tight around and around a um, embroidery hoop and hung the welcome on that. So that'll go out probably on the uh, mudroom where people come in in toward when you know winter or Christmas. But I thought, wouldn't it be fun to use the harvest for something? And I was digging through my craft room and I found an eight by twelve canvas. I had bought a two pack and I did a reverse canvas last year. Decided it wasn't my favorite thing, but I didn't want to paint it and it sat there. Then I rummaged through the cupboards and I found a whole bunch of fake um, leaves and a couple of autumn picks that have seen better days. I've had them for a while and they look kind of beat up, but the leaves on them looked good. So I gathered up all of the loose um, fall crafting stuff and I threw it on my ironing board, turned on a camera, and I played around until I found a arrangement that I liked and I glued it down and I used E600 6000 because I was afraid hot glue would not hold the metal on the canvas and so if you want to watch that video how I made my harvest I use the word harvest um, canvas for fall I did that got it out and it looks great so I've been Pulling all of slowly, my husband did notice. He goes, you got the fall stuff out. And I said, not yet, just a couple things. <laughs> pumpkins, he goes, it's early. I said, the pumpkins will come out in September. And I told him about how I have never had a pumpkin spice coffee at Starbucks. And that was going to be my goal. I did, in fact, get someone who bought me a virtual cup of coffee. Thanks, Barb. And I'll be going to Starbucks in September and purchasing one. And I will give a full report on whether I enjoyed it or not. I'm going to think that I'm going to like it because I do like fall spice. I even saw a great um, recipe on Pressure Luck, of course. Um, he used a bundt cake and, he, and almond flour. So it was a gluten-free banana bread. And I thought, hmm, I need to order a little bundt cake that fits in the pressure cooker because I have become the pressure cooking queen. Yes, I know. I don't usually cook stuff, but after following some recipes, and I'm going to be getting Pressure Lux 
cookbook. My husband forgot to order it um, when he did the last Amazon order, but it's on the list. I've made broccoli, uh, beef and broccoli with rice in one step in the rice cooked in the little tiny pan above the beef and broccoli. It was delicious. I've made Korean barbecue, um, ground turkey and broccoli. I made beef stew this week. Oh, I've made, um, did something with chicken. I can't remember, but you know, once you get going with it and you figure out the ratios, I, I can start feeling out how I could do this maybe a little simpler or since ingredients up here are like sesame oil and sesame I haven't been able to find very well I know I could order it but I thought why well, make this sauce from scratch if I can find a sauce that's similar to the ingredients and I can just dump it in you know until I can find some of the ingredients maybe it'll get easier as time goes on so what I did for the broccoli beef was I found the Iron Chef sauce for um, for Chinese food and it was amazing. It was really, really good. It was way better than the, the sauce I could have made for it. So that's my cheating um, tip for Instant Pot is if it's telling you to make a sauce and you can't find all the ingredients or you don't have the money to buy 10 different spices for it just buy the sauce on the shelf and dump it in it worked great and then of course add a little water so that the whole thing will cook and not burn up and actually come to pressure so we had a good week of trying instant pot dinners without uh i've had a couple epic failures over time and i keep figuring out what i'm doing wrong and and it's it's actually become fun. So if my stove takes a complete and utter final dump on me, which I think it's going to, I think we can survive. And I have on my list of Merry Christmas to me from me um, is buying the air fryer lid for the Instant Pot. I know I heard about it a couple weeks ago and I need one in my life and then I'll never need to use the stove again unless I'm cooking for a large amounts of people because that's the one thing that the instant pot does that I think is great for me is that it limits how much food you can make so overeating for two people is a little less problematic because it doesn't make a ton of food which you know <sighs> Some people just like to have a buffet and they think they're going to have leftovers. Well, I would cook like that. And then there were never leftovers and we were eating it all. So <laughs> I told my husband, I said, well, you, you could make extra and try to have leftovers. I said, but you can't put all that in that instant pot. Well, he's thinking about buying a, a bigger one. I don't know if he can. So anyway, <laughs> that was the instant pot. It's great. It just why can't we you make this bigger and more uh, because it doesn't fit you can only put so much food in there um i just wanted to also let you know i'm still writing saturday morning coffee and i think i've wrapped up my um garden um updates on that which i did a few times over the summer and just kind of doing uh what i've been thinking about what i've learned how things have been going um during uh my life and especially this last few weeks of talking about the pandemic a teeny bit but how I'm getting through it and all the fun things I've been up to and let's talk about the garden yep it's winding down the uh, white phlox is blooming and all the yellow flowers they, they keep blooming they keep blooming and blooming I am I'm thrilled they must like the extra sun since all the trees were cut down and we, I believe, have come to an, a, a decision. We meaning, um, I told my husband what I thought would look good in the backdrop of the garden, but he had to think about it. And since he's doing the work, um, he will need to do all of the hard work about digging for trees. And we have come to a decision. We are going to the nursery tomorrow. We are going to see if they have the dwarf Alberta spruce that we want in stock. Otherwise, we're going to order them. 
and there are going to be three Alberta spruce and a crabapple tree that I've been watering in its pot since the spring because we couldn't decide where to put it. They will be put in the back drop of the garden space. There is enough room um, and my husband has a tractor to help dig the hole if he needs to and I'm telling you it's going to look fantastic. The The beauty of the property that butts up to us, it is a parking lot and since the pandemic, you know, it's not been used very much. It's got a couple of neighbors who think it's their parking lot and such. But last night, I realized how exposed it is because every spot in that parking lot was filled with families going into the school for these. Uh, it's a private school. Their opening is coming up soon. Evidently, everyone had backpacks. I didn't see too many masks, I'm sorry to say. Um, and they were going in like they were picking up schedules and kids were going through an orientation and meeting their teachers. It was packed and I felt while cooking dinner pretty exposed. And I'm thinking those little trees will help with the view and they will help eventually in making a screen, a natural screen. It won't be as thick or as lush or as beautiful as the trees and the natural screen that was there before, but it will be there. And I also noticed I was so thrilled that some of the shrubbery, some of the shrubs that were cut off and I thought dug out on my property line, there's just enough roots left where the snowflake bush that my dad planted is coming up that will get to be good sized in next year and that will help with the screen everything is coming along you know after one summer it's hard to know um, the maturity level of some of the plants you have and how high they'll be so anyway the natural screens coming along the garden is wrapping up we've planted a lot of grass seed to try to fix the garden and um, the lawn near the garden where it got all dug up and we had to move the old fairy garden to the new fairy garden spot that is filling in nicely and it's going to be beautiful next year it'll be even better than this year I still miss the trees but overall The garden project is wrapping up nicely and I'm okay with the results I've gotten over the massive loss of <laughs> losing my natural screen that was uh, uh, between the properties. And we're waiting for the tree, the tree cutting guy, the crew we hired to come back. There are a few dead trees um, toward my front yard and they're really looking so bad this summer they're beyond dead and they're starting to fall apart so those will have to be trimmed they'll be rem removed and stumped out and some other trees that are out of control and dangerous and hitting my house are going to have to be cut because they're leaning and the root systems look bad so overall that is the saga of the whole tree and garden situation and um yeah we got about where we need to be the only there's only a couple of small little button-up projects that i'd like to do outside i'm still trying to get a new front door that's proving to be a little difficult it's a screen door um it the paint peeled off it and we it's a weird size so trying to figure out what to get and trying to find someone to install it is been a real pain in the butt so, so that's really the gardening. Um, we still have the, mu the mud room where you enter the house to deal with over the fall. That's not a huge project. It's a small room. Um, we were going to try to move the washer and dryer up into the back half of the mud room because it's a closet, a big walk-in closet. That's been on hold for a couple of years. But what we need to do is we have flooring and paint for the main part you know for for the whole part of the mudroom and the main part needs to be repainted and i think we might get that done this fall winter my husband's been thinking about how 
He wants to fix the little access doors rotted through and some other solutions that we need to work on. So I think he's going to work on that this fall when it cools off. I would like to have that mudroom back in order before snow flies and we have water all over the place because the original plank flooring is exposed. It's been painted many times and the little door is broken and rotten that just sits there. I don't know why you would want to access under there because there's no plumbing to under there currently. But, you know, I don't know why people did what they did when they build houses and, and do the whole um, renovating a hundred year old house. You find so many surprises. The other thing that he still has to finish is doing next week while he has several days off is all of those plugs in the kitchen and light switches. One of them doesn't work right, and there's a couple left that needs to be redone. And after the shock he got last time, I think he's um, been doing a lot more thinking about how to do it and how to shut everything down. So overall, that's, that's the projects for the house. So because that has slowed down, I've been starting a billion quilting projects. Oh, I, I'm out of control. I'm telling you. I'm way out of control. So I started cutting out three soft books. They're shaped like a house. They're going to be inspired by a Rebecca Page quiet book, as she's calling hers. And I want to make mine four pages. So I'm not really, it'd be two pages, four scenes, you know, when you open the book, there'll be the cover and the back and then the two in the middle. And they'll be like playhouses, play scenes with a little teddy bear type of uh, animal. And I might be able to, we'll see how it goes. I may make two of them per, per house for the granddaughters. But my problem is, is I keep waffling thinking, wouldn't this be cute as a bag? And you could put the bear and accessories in the bag or maybe like a zipper pouch thing or something but I don't know how to do a zipper so I get all these ideas I get it started and then I get overwhelmed of all the decisions to make I'm going to use my Cricut to cut out some squares and rectangles for windows and embellish the little house you know with a I think a bed and maybe make one room like a living room scene with a couch and I'd like the back cover, I cut out a green batik to make it outside. And it would be cute to have either um, like a tent or a campfire, um, something like that on it would be super cute. And then you could have, you know, like the dog going camping out in the backyard. So there's lots of ideas. And you make some of the things interactive, like maybe they can lift up the curtains, maybe they could open the door to the tent maybe they could slip the bear into a bed in one of the rooms maybe make it like a bedroom um, so we'll see I've got some ideas and I just need to do it and it gets overwhelming sometimes because applique applique is not always my friend so I've got the houses cut out and they're fused and then while, you know, they're fused on the interfacing to make them stiffer. And then I'm going to just jump into the deep end this weekend, get the cricket out and start, start working on some of the things. It's just, I don't know why it's, you know what, it's that starting. It's like going to the gym, right? Or going on a long walk. It's just putting your shoes on and taking the first few steps. I think that's the, the thing with the cricket. It takes a few steps you got to get the computer you got to get the shape that you want you've got and I've, I've got all of that laid out I've kind of played around with the design on it but it's just making those first few cuts that just hang me up mentally then once I get going with it it's like the momentum of the project keeps going and I'm I'm on a roll and it's good I've got lots of thread colors so I can applique these this is also a project for me to get more comfortable with applique. So to make it match and, and have everything look really sweet. And I think instead of making it as a quilted um, house or bag where you have to turn everything inside out and have it like quilted or puffy, 
I may put batting in there, but I think I'm going to serge the edges. That was the whole thing is I got my serger to work so I could do things like this craft project. It's It will be simple. It will be cute. And, and having those exposed serge edges will be fine. So that is one of the things. The other thing I got hung up on but have started, and I think I'm going to be on a roll, is a precious t-shirt collection from one of my co-workers she asked me to make a t-shirt quilt from some it's a series of one artist concerts that she went to okay that's cool until i realized some of these t-shirts date back to the 80s and i'm like ah oh, what if i mess up and getting that paralyzed feeling of starting it out she said, make them however you want. I like your wonky look. You know, you're good at this. Just make the t-shirts. I'm um, like, thank you that you like wonky because I like wonky t-shirt quilts. Oh my gosh, though. I couldn't cut the first t-shirt because I'm like, these are her precious shirts from all of these memories. And I just had a hard time. Okay, I got a pair of scissors and I cut up the front and the back of one shirt. Now I feel that it, since I've made the one cut that I can start fusing the shirts and get the ball rolling on this because I have two more people that want t-shirt quilts done. So I, it's just getting started. Getting started has been a problem for me and I, is it procrastination? Yeah, I'm procrastinating a little bit. Sometimes you need a little bit of a break in between projects, but I'm like, it's just that first cut, the first step in the process. And it's no different than my putting off that first putting your shoes on to go for a walk or pulling up the exercise program that I want to do with the active five. It's just that first act of it. I, I really have to push myself and almost schedule it. And then get going, you know, and just say, all right, you've got to do this today. And if all you do is one cut, then it's like the ice is broken and I've been able to move forward. And so the other thing that I am um, working on and you're like, wow, you're doing all these things. You gotta remember this has happened over the period of a week um, is I loaded a queen size quilt, which happens to be another coworker who happens to be the supervisor of my supervisor, okay? And she and I have known each other for decades, well before she has climbed to this um, administrative position in the company. But all of a sudden, I just got butterflies over this. I'm like, this is a gift for her daughter. <clears throat> um, let me cough, excuse me. And it's beautiful. It's an absolutely beautiful quilt. I'm custom quilting it. And I used a gray thread on black and sometimes I get a little nervous over it, but I'm just, I'm going with it. And that was another thing is that I didn't, I didn't have the ability to do a thousand thread color changes in this quilt. So, you know, to make it a perfect custom, I guess that you would, but I, I was avoiding loading it on because number one, it's a big queen and once I got it loaded on, it sat there for a couple days and now I have done quilting the entire first segment. So every area's stitches have been chosen. Now that brain power part is done. I procrastinated on that a little bit because I was waiting for the quilt to speak to me on what it wanted to be quilted as. I know, isn't that like, woo? Well, sometimes you just got to look at them and wait and think and ponder and look at the fabrics and try to figure out what is that area saying to me? What should be done? What do I want to focus on? See, these are all the questions that you don't get paid for when you're doing a custom quilt job because it can take hours of thinking. And maybe that's my problem. Maybe I should be charging for those and I'm not. But anyway, these people that I quilt for, are a lot of them are my friends. And so, you know, friendship has a, has a huge impact on, on the price, right? 
Um, I don't do enough long arming, I suppose, to make a living at it, but I do it for a side gig and to keep my skills up. And I love helping my friends make a quilt special. And this one is going to be special and custom quilted and it's going to be so pretty. She used teals and purples and some black and it really does look like parts of it are the ocean and it felt like water to me. So there's a lot of curves in this. Um, it's a like a log cabin that, what is that called? Anyway, a chevron log cabin where you have the square in the corner, not the middle, and then you build the logs out. Oh, it's so pretty. I don't want to give this quilt back to her. I may want to sneak it into my collection. <laughs> so I loaded that on and I've been also thinking about my own quilt top that I finished recently. And I think I'm about four or five now that I need to quilt. Um, my bookshelf quilt, we finished the summer quilting tale and my bookshelf quilt is done and I am thinking about how I want to quilt it. I don't have any ideas yet, so it's, it's going to go in the think pile. But what's interesting about it is I measured everything twice and the top is a little thinner than the bottom by about an inch and a half over the course of the bookcase. And I think it happened is when I steamed it that it drew the fabrics in up at the top of the shelf versus the bottom. So I've been researching how to block a quilt top. I want to try to get it blocked. You know, you get it damp and you pin it on. I have wool pressing pads and alpaca pressing pads and a huge design wall and press it out, pin it out, let it dry, then load it. And then I'm going to try to block it again after it's quilted because the quilting sometimes, you know, it might lose its shape a little bit. So the bookshelf quilt is done. The sew along is done, but that doesn't mean that you can't jump on anytime and make your own bookshelf quilt. The weekly how-to videos are out there. Angel had some great ideas for quilting and I'm thinking about some of her ideas too for my quilting. And I was just very excited and it was so wonderful to meet everybody. And I want to say thank you, Angel, so much for all of the hard work. Halo Inspirations is her website and her business page on Facebook. It was a great time. It was a very good time. So the next sew along I want to do is at the end of September. And you're telling me, wait, you got all these projects going. Yeah, but they're things that I'm just going to work on a little at a time. This next sew along is going to be uh, much simpler. It's going to be an orphan block sew along. And I found a wonderful... Uh, ideas for using orphan blocks by quilting jet girl so that's going to be on the group my creative corner three on facebook it's a private group and you can join the, up and i you know it's about a month away when i think about it it's either i think the end of september is when i want to start it and it it won't be that intense because the blocks are all pieced if you have orphan blocks and they'll just be laying them out and then I'll put another quilt top in the stack, but that's okay. I have so many orphan blocks, something needs to be done with them. And I'm hoping that this inspires me to get more of them done. And if I don't keep all of the orphan block quilts, I may donate some of them. And that leads me to the next quilt top that I want to work on is a Halloween themed one. I saw Just Get It Done Quilts did a segment on using layer cakes. And she has a similar brainwave that I had when I bought a couple layer cakes over the last year. I can't possibly cut into them and I didn't know what to do with them. I was thinking I need to do 10 inch blocks that are simple so you don't lose the design, especially in the layer cake I bought for Halloween last year or the year before, and it's been in my uh, collection of pets, you know, the pet fabric that you can't cut into. And she has put a layer cake pattern together, and it's super cute. 
Um, it's real modern looking. And so if you go to YouTube, just get it done quilts, you'll see all of her different um, videos. But the one I'm talking about is the layer cake um, video. She is so knowledgeable. I've learned so much watching her channel on Quilt Coach is another two, two segments that she's done that I've learned. I can't believe people ask the questions I've always wanted to ask or I have asked. And then I didn't get um, answers that helped me figure it out. So check out her layer cake. It's real modern. But what she does is she uses real simple things like you do a 10 inch square, half square triangle. Well, not 10. I think she trims everything down to eight and a half or nine inches. I can see I got to read the directions more closely. She does four patches. She does um, economy blocks or diamond in a square. And then she uses um, hourglasses I see in here, the symmetry. So you break this quilt into a quadrant if you're going to do like a throw size or a lap size. And this particular pattern is 48 by 64, which is perfect. And you just make everything reflect, you know, using symmetry as the design trick, I guess, the design work that'll do all the lifting, heavy lifting in the design pattern for you is pretty much what she said. If you wanted to make this much bigger, you could, you know, double or triple this, you know, or make four, put four together to make a massive king size. Oh my gosh, I don't even think my frame would take one that big. But anyway, I think the De La Luna would be perfect for this 48 by 64. It'll be simple piecing. And then this winter, I'm going to bring out the Dear Jane and the Kinships again to work on them. They've been put away for a little while so I can work on fall. I like working on things for my house during the season that it is. So I'm going to work on this fall project because fall is almost here. In fact, I in my brain, it's officially here September 1st, but I know the calendar says something else. So that's a project that I'm going to be working on probably in the next week or so because I have to print off some of her directions and I want to print off her layout because I really did enjoy the layout that she used. So the last thing is I have been going on um, boredom buster trips out of my house during lunch. You know, I normally come home for lunch and do a little quilting and do things like that. But since I'm working from home and I'm still doing quilting and stuff during my lunch hour, I decided that I needed to get out more and I needed to drive my car a little bit more because I feel like I had forgotten how to drive and check out things in my neighborhood and close to me that I haven't checked out in a while. And I realized that the Salvation Army thrift store is less than a mile, probably half a mile from my house. So it's the perfect thing to take my car, drive down the main five lane road, down to where the interstate, interstate has an exit ramp south of town. We have two. We have one in town and one south of town. So I drive to the south, turn around, come through all of the traffic and hit all the lights. And then the little thrift shop is right there. I have found on Wednesdays, it is a senior discount day. And since I'm over 50, I qualify. Woohoo! Discount for silver hair. I'll take it. So what have I found at the thrift shop? Because, you know, I'm trying to be more minimalist. I'm trying to get rid of the things I don't need and all of the excess. But I am not going to have a house with no glassware and pictures and things because I do like them. So I found several items that were really cute. I got some old cookbooks from the 70s and 80s and I sent my daughter some of the old cookbooks for her um, vintage shop. I found two white Fire King mugs. They're really old. I got them for a quarter. Those were at the Goodwill across town. I, I found two 
amber depression glass era plates. And I collect an amber depression glass that has roses on it called Sharon or Cabbage Rose. This is like its sister pattern that goes really well with it. It has just a couple of little um, differences, but it's called Dutch Rose. And it is, they were pristine. I got them for a dollar a piece. I was so thrilled. I mean, back in the day when I collected depression glass when I was a teenager, it was like $12, $15 a plate. I paid a, a lot more. The water pitcher is like the holy grail. And I've had to buy that twice. And back in the day, those were $100. So yeah, I have a lot of money invested in this depression glass collection. I did most of that before I got married. And we don't eat off it. What's really sad is because <laughs> the plates are small and the food gets cold real quick. But the other part is I think that it has um, uranium in it to give it that yellow color. And, you know, no one wants to eat off of radioactive plates, right? <laughs> but they're very pretty and they sparkle very, very pretty in my china cabinet. So I bought those two Depression Glass era plates. And while I was there, I was I actually was going there to look for Pyrex because my daughter sells that in her store. And I thought, you know, if I find it I, and it was a great price, I would ship it to her. Well, I found quite a few Pyrex bowls, um, you know, the, the ones with handles on them that had lids. They were 15 to $20 a piece. And there was a little baking dish that was from the 70s. And it was brown and had um, colonial things, you know, like Eagle and that too expensive for my blood, even on senior discount day. But what I did see when I was there and I passed on it was a Fire King Lusterware bowl. It was peachy orange. And I'm like, you know, I don't know much about that, but that looks pretty old. And I think it's way cool. It has a little embossed leaf pattern around the rim at the top. So I went home and I asked my daughter, I said, is this something that is interesting? She goes, actually, that's a really nice bowl, probably from the 50s. And, you know, to find them in good shape is hard. And so I'm like, hmm, it was $5. So I went back on senior discount day and I got it for a little bit less. And I found a knitting circle, you know, they call them knitting looms, you know, where you can just knit in a circle and not so much hand work, you know, it's hard on my hands knitting can be. So I bought that and I'm like, cause I passed on them the day before, but they were still there when I went back the second day, I'm kind of getting hooked on the thrifting, antiquing stuff. I love looking for all that stuff, but my problem is since um, my mother-in-law passed away and I've had my parents downsized and, you know, I have a lot of old glass and old things, teapots, cups, tchotchkes, you know, all kinds of things. And many of them are packed in totes, um, things that I, you know, I don't want to keep. Eventually, I'm going to have to try to sell. I have all these pictures and boxes. I have lots of things. And it's like, I feel, it, you know, there's this obligation to keep some of it. But I need to do is over this next year is go through all of those and the things that I want to keep. I'm going to rearrange the china cabinet because it's been the same for a long time. And then I need to start figuring out how to sell or donate or gift the rest of the things that I, that I have that I'm kind of like, you know, they're really cool. They don't deserve dumpster. That's why I have so much of it. Cause I'm, I was like, oh, this isn't dumpster worthy. And, um, when we had the dumpster this spring of going through all of her things that needed to be disposed of, but there's so much of so many things that are cool, but do I really want to keep it? And that's where, you know, I need to work on that. Finding homes, selling things, which I hate doing, but it needs to be done because I can't keep it all. Or my daughter's going to be dumpstering and selling and doing a lot of this with my son. Oh dear. So that's what I've been up to this week. I have been struggling on getting started. You know, sometimes when you wrap things up, you need to take a little break. I fully believe in that and recharge your batteries. But then I found myself 
having some difficulty starting and doing some procrastinating and some procrastinating. Procrastinating meaning I'm finding things to do so that I don't have to do housework, chores, and all of the things, but that I'm also procrastinating on things that um, jobs that people have hired me to do, like the t-shirt quilts and the long arming. And long arming is going great guns. I got two more quilts yesterday. So I think I have still five. Every one I get off, I seem to, the frame, I seem to get two back in. So that's what I've been doing over the last week is breaking the procrastinating mindset and just doing one cut on the t-shirt quilt, one row on the long arming. And I'm going to get the Cricut out and set up and I'm going to start cutting out just one or two things to get these little quiet books done. But I did procrastinate and make my harvest fall themed canvas. And you can see that on YouTube. At the, it's Vicki Holloway is the name of the YouTube. And I'll put a link in the description below to the blog post that talked about it. So have you been procrastinating or have you been procrastinating? Yeah, I've been doing both. But trying to stay along my healthy path and my healthy lifestyle and just realize that sometimes you just need to move at a slower pace and be a little more relaxed. And we're doing new things and getting out and seeing all of our friends and family and doing, doing that because I think it's time. I've been struggling with that and I'm sure you have too. There's lots of struggles and decisions and unknown when it comes to visiting people, going places, school starting, all of that. And um, yeah, I'm going to see the people. We're going to keep six feet apart. If I have to, I'll put masks on for those who are uncomfortable. Have it outside and um, we're going to have our first dinner out with friends. So wish me luck. And I am not sure, but I, I'm like, do I want to order their oven, brick oven baked pizza? Do I want their nachos? Oh my gosh, they're so good. They're so good. So I'm looking forward to that this weekend. So everybody have a most wonderful day. And I hope that you're safe, that your families have had opportunities to see each other, even if it's on Zoom, and that you and your friends are able to stay in touch. We need to know how each other is doing. Check up on our friends and family as often as we can. And quilt on, everyone. I also want to thank the um, people who have bought me virtual cups of coffee. You can do that on the blog or on my Etsy shop, My Creative Corner 3. There are places to sign up for my newsletter. You can also support me by purchasing the Zen and the Art of Creating premium podcast. And if you have any comments that you would like to make or to contact me, you can send me an email if you don't want to leave a public note on the show notes at vholloway12345, vholloway, H-O-L-L-O-W-A-Y, 12345 at gmail.com.